Hi, Victor here with Vic Video Studio. In today's video, I'm going to demonstrate a neon under text animation effect that some of you might find useful for your future creative projects. The result is outstanding. And some, might think that this could only be possible in After Effects. Well, this is a short example, of how you can achieve stunning effects inside Create Studio as well. Let's just start creating. I started by adding a rectangle from the Shapes menu. I have expanded this rectangle to fit the canvas, and I gave it a color for a better contrast. I chose a heavy dark gray, almost black. I will rename this as a background, and I'll lock it in place. The next element I'll need, you guessed it, it is a text element. I will choose a font, I select one of my favorites, Mont Heavy, it is a very nice font, that looks just great on this design I will show you today. I'll type in a text, you can type whatever you'd like, and I'll make it a little bigger and place it in the center. Now, I will go to Advanced, and under the Border Settings, I will leave the border color as it is, but I will have to set a value for the border, and I will set 2 for the width of the border. Next I'll go back to the settings tab, I will change the opacity of the text fill color, and I'll bring that all the way down to 0. Now, let's add another rectangle, and I will make it smaller like a little vertical bar. I'll bring it here on the left side of the text. I will set a bright green color, to get that neon effect. I am renaming this, running color. And now let's make magic, I will right click on the shape, and I will mask it with the text element. Now, the shape has a mask. The shape will only be visible within the text boundaries. Next I will add a custom animation to this neon color shape, I will set position, and the easing I will set for both, and choose expo. By placing the playhead over to the right of the added animation, I will take the neon shape to the right side of the text, you can see how it is only visible inside the text. I will extend the duration of the added animation, to have the running neon color go more slowly. Next, I will duplicate this, and set it aside for later. And, I will add another rectangle. I will resize it and make it long and thinner like a long bar, to fit the length of the text. To be more precise, I will unlock the scale X and Y values, and I will set the Y at 3. Next, I will bring the bar under the text, and set the same bright green color. Now, before I add the custom animation, I will change the rotation point of this long bar to the middle right. This way, the bar will scale up starting from the right side. I have renamed it, and now I will add a custom animation, I will set scale, and the easing, I will set both and again, expo. And now, having the playhead before the animation, I will only alter the X scale value and set it to zero. I need to duplicate this under text blue bar, because I want it to retract back to the left side. Since I have set the rotation point to the middle right, remember? The only way to make it retract to the left is to duplicate and remove the custom animation. Now, as I have removed the custom animation, I will need to bring back the initial scale value. And, change the rotation point to the middle left. And I can add a new custom animation, with the same settings, I will set scale, and easing I'll set both and I choose Expo. Actually, this animation I will need at the end, so I'll bring it here on the right side. Now, I want this blue bar under the text to scale down to zero at the end, so, having the playhead at the end, I will set the X scale value at zero. And then, I will adjust these two elements, and I am repositioned them a little bit. I am organizing them here on the timeline, I am trying to move them a little to the right, I don't want the blue bar under the text, to start its animation too soon regarding the text animation. 
Actually, I will make these two blue bar element even shorter. Just the duration of their added animations. Let's have a preview and see the timing of the animations. I think I should make this blue bar a little bit more thinner. So I'll just go to settings, and I will change the Y scale value at 2. I think it looks much better thinner like this, but, you can set your own preferred values. And you can even make it rounded at both ends. Now, this element here on the right, it is the running color that I have duplicated. Remember that this is actually a text. So, I will bring it up here. And, I will add another rectangle on the canvas. I will make it long as the text is. And bring it here under the text. I will quickly rename this as well. Next, I will expand this element. And I will remove its mask. I no longer need this mask, so, I will delete it. Now, I will right click on the rectangle element, and I will mask it with the text. Let's add a custom animation, it will be position, and the easing set on both, and choose expo again. I move the playhead over the added animation, and I'll move the rectangle up. I zoom in and adjust its position to have it on the upper half of the text. I will extend the animation a little bit, to run a little bit slower. While I make the element shorter on the timeline. Next I will select these two elements right here. And I will group them together. I will give it a name. Then I will duplicate once and bring it up here. And to the right like so. And ungroup them here. We'll have the same animation for this blue bar. Only now I will place it in the middle of the text. Right between the white color above and the no color below. I move the first one on that scales up from the right to the left, and now I'll move the second one that continues and scales down from the right to the left. Let me play a preview of this part, just to see how it looks. You can see that the blue bar comes in too early. So, I need to bring that a little to the right. Just after the animation of the white rectangle comes to a stop. And, of course, the text needs to show up while the blue bar is on screen. So I'll extend it. Let's play it again. There was a blink. Something is not right with the transition from one blue bar element to the other. So, to detect the imperfection, I will fully extend the timeline and I will overlap them a little bit. To be able to see the difference, I will set a different color for this one, only temporary. I'll zoom in, and zoom back out. And now I zoom back into this left end of the blue bar. You can see that they are not perfectly aligned. So, I will select the yellow one, and I will perfectly align with the other one. Now that I have them aligned, I will zoom out, and place them back as they were. I will change back the color, and let's have another preview from the start. Now, I've noticed another blink in the main text, right here where the two elements meet. You can see that they overlap, and because of that in a fraction of a second the text was double in white color intensity. I will adjust it and we'll have another preview. Next, I will duplicate one more time this text element. I will drag it here to the right. And I will bring it up here on the timeline. I expand the element on the timeline. Remember that this text had a white rectangle moving and stopped in the upper half of the text. Now, I will position the playhead before the added animation. Remember, this was position and easing was expo. And I will move the white rectangle upwards, to the point I can no longer see it. And this will be the starting point for this animation. The next step will be to move the playhead over the animation to the right, and move the white rectangle down, just below the text. I will make the element shorter on the timeline, just to fit the animation. Now, I will duplicate this element as it is once again, 
and move it to the right and two more times. I'll play a preview, just to give you an idea what will look like. But, there will be some more fine adjustments to be done. I'll start by changing the easing, because as you just saw, Expo is too fast. So, I'll change the easing to linear. I will go and change the easing to linear, to all the other three elements. Next, I will fully extend the timeline, and I will count 10 of these frames of a second. And make this first element as long as this count. And I must not forget to adjust its custom animation accordingly. I'll bring the next one here. And this time I will count only 9 frames of a second, so, this will be shorter with one of these frames than the previous one. I'll fast forward a little bit, just keep in mind that the following ones will be shorter with one frame than the previous. Next, I will go down here, and I will duplicate this slide up white element. And I will bring it up, and bring it here to the right. I'll expand the element down, and I'll remove the mask, and now that it is removed I have two elements on the canvas, a text and a rectangle, I will delete the rectangle, as I don't need it here, I only need the text. And I will duplicate this text now. The first one here below, I will make it shorter on the timeline, and this one will stay as it is. And the next one above, I will bring back the opacity all the way up to 100%, and so the text will be white. And next, I'll go here to advanced settings, and I will set the border width to zero. Next, I will add a custom animation, I will set color, let's fully extend the timeline. And again I will count 10 frames of a second. I will extend the duration of this custom animation I just added, right here where I counted the 10 frames. Then, with the playhead over this animation to the right, I will set the color to change to the bright green. Next move will be, to duplicate reverse this animation, and by doing so, the text color will return to white. Again, I will count the frames, but only 9 frames this time, 1 frame shorter. I will repeat this process several times, every new duplicate reverse, 1 frame shorter. And, let me play a preview. For this text to exit the scene, I'll go and add a preset animation. I'll go to motion and I will select out. And I'll set fade. I open the animation settings. I will set this animation to go by letters. And increase the text offset to about 50%. I am adjusting the time length for the text and the end animation. Let's have another quick look. I think I need my text to fade out by letters, but in a random order. So, I'll go back to animation settings and I will change direction to be random. It looks much better, but too fast. So, I will extend it back and extend the animation as well. And, one more preview. One thing is missing, the background music. I already have imported my audio file, I'll just drag it here on the canvas. Then, I will trim the end part to fit the whole animation. From the previous playback, I noticed that one more thing I need to change. For these four elements, I will need to change the color from white to that bright green. And let's see the final result.
So, this is how to animate a neon effect, to create a YouTube intro, or a logo animation for your projects. I really hope this tutorial is helpful, and I am really curious to know your thoughts, so please leave your thoughts in the comments below. Please don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell to be notified for my future releases. Also, let me know in the comments, what other techniques or effects in Create Studio would you like to know more about, and I'll be more than happy to make a tutorial for that. As always, thank you for watching. And, have fun creating.